What's going on guys? This is the Tenedor for the tech here .com, and I have a new review today. It's been a while, I know. I've been doing the law school thing, so I've neglected the tech videos, but I got something new for law school and I figured why not use it in a review. So it's made by ASUS and it's powered by Windows RT. So if you can't tell, this is the ASUS VivoTad TF600T. It is ASUS's Transformer series of tablets, but instead of running Android, it's running Windows RT. So let's give a little comparison. As you already know, I have a ASUS Transformer TF300T, which is the little brother of the Transformer Prime running Android. Uh, I think at this point it's 4 point something something. So size-wise, it's pretty much the same. Um, you can see the Transformer there. It's no, there isn't, isn't really much of a difference in terms of thickness when it's in tablet mode. Uh, it's pretty light as well. Um, a little bit lighter than the Transformers have TF300, but it's really not going to make too much of a difference. Um, the back of the Transformer T uh, Vivo Tab TF600 is actually metallic aluminum, um, not like the TF300, which had that plasticky vibrating thing in the back. I really didn't like that. And then it has the rubberized part here that most likely houses the um, the wireless GPS um, things of that sort because as we all remember from the Transformer Prime that kind of those those things don't exactly work. Was the Transformer Prime? Yeah, before the Prime. So uh, let's take this out. Um, difference between this and this as you're gonna see now when you're opening up the, the Android variant, usually they keep the latch. On the tablet itself, on the dock, actually, or is this? Yeah, on the dock, and then you can just remove it like that. Um, they opted to go differently with the Vivo tablet, and instead of putting that latch on the dock, they left the latch on the actual tablet. So to undock this, it's very simple. You just put that there, and then the tablet pulls out. So if we look at the tablet, look at the keyboard. Uh, let's move the tablet out the way. And get out the keyboard of the Android variant so you can see there isn't really much of a difference. Um, the keys are laid out similarly except as you can see we have our Windows logo key there instead of the ubiquitous home button. And you get a full set of Windows functions as well. So all these up here are very similar to what you would find on a regular Windows computer um, and a regular Windows keyboard. Everything pretty much works the same since this is Windows um, 8 RT. Um, you pretty much have a, a little bit stripped down version of regular Windows 8. So all of your keyboard shortcuts work the same. Everything works the same as if you were using an actual uh, computer, actual you know, Windows laptop or Windows desktop. Everything is pretty much the same. Uh, what's lacking? Is there anything lacking here? Nope. The Layout remains pretty much the same on the tablet version, I mean on the uh, Android version of the Transformer and the uh, Windows version of the Transformer. Um, weight wise it's pretty similar, this actually is a little bit heavier because it's metallic. Um, the latch itself is a little harder as well, but then again I've had this Transformer for a very long time so it's probably been worn out a little bit. Uh, but you're going to get very similar typing uh, conditions on the Vivo Tab stock that you did get on the other docks. The buttons themselves are actually a little bit more raised, which makes typing a little bit better. So we can get a better shot of the keys there. They're actually a lot more raised than on the Android Transformer, and the uh, mouse pad buttons are actually on the trackpad itself. And they do, in fact, click, and they go pretty deep in, so it gets a really nice feeling there. And you get both right and left clicks. All in all, the uh, typing experience is very nice. I use this in class all the time. I'm, I'm a pretty serious elitist typist when it comes to typing. Um, my keyboard of choice at home is a DOS uh, professional keyboard for Mac. And um, it's very nice, very comfortable. Um, it is, it is the same as a mechanical keyboard for sure, but it gets the job done. Alright, so let's take a look at the actual tablet itself now. So, let's raise this. Zoom out. And zoom down. Okay. So this is the Vivo tablet, and as you see, it has the Windows key on the bottom of the screen. On the side, you have your headphone jack and a volume rocker, it's 
pretty easy to get to, um, a little uncomfortable to click though because it's kind of embedded in a little bit. So just keep that in mind. And on the other side you have the latch to eject. Uh, let's just do this. So you have the latch to eject, um, micro SD card slot. I think it only takes SDHC because it's not reading the one I have in there at the moment. And here is the micro HDMI port. Uh, so you can send this set out to uh, your television screen or to you know any monitor you have that takes in HDMI. Uh, on the back we have our 5 megapixel camera and a very very nice flash. Although the software does not support it too well because it doesn't always work. Uh, so let's get to the on this side we have sorry the uh, power uh, key along with uh, on the little light there that shows when it's charging. The little microphone on the top there as well and on the bottom of the tablet we have the latches where the uh, where the dock plugs in and you can plug the power cord actually on this side over here so let's go ahead and power on the tablet as you see this is full Windows RT so let's unlock and you can use a pin to unlock so I have there and we go let's lower the brightness on this a bit and uh, whoa too much okay so this isn't the start screen, this is the desktop mode. As you know, Windows RT, you're not getting a full version of Windows 8. So the default home screen is actually this right here. And this Windows, um, it used to be called Metro UI. I think now it's called Modern UI. So, you know, it, it takes getting used to, but it's very nice. It's very fluid, actually. What I really liked about this tablet is how smooth uh, the transitions were. It was way better than I was used on my Android tablet. And that was always something that I really disliked on that. It was very difficult to go through things because it was kind of slow and sluggish. Um, other than that, you know, the Metro UI is uh, pretty much where you're going to um, have access to all of your applications. Um, so you're going to have to get used to this layout. However, it does have desktop mode, which is actually what I use the most. And um, works just like a full version of Windows on your computer. In terms of using the desktop, the desktop anyway. You're not going to be able to install any legacy apps, which means um, anything that wasn't designed for Windows 8 or Windows RT, you won't be able to install. So um, if you're a Steam gamer or you download your own programs to do certain things, you're not going to be able to do that on Windows RT. If you're going to do, if you want that, you're going to have to um, invest in a better tablet, something like the Surface Pro, or I believe the Surface Pro 2 is coming out soon. Um, anything that uses a full version of Windows 8, you'll be able to download legacy apps on. Anything with the RT variant, you will not. So it's you know, just good to keep that in mind. But what you do get in full desktop mode is full um, Internet Explorer. And this comes way in handy for me um, in terms of classes because I do have to use certain uh, types of websites that use certain add-ons on Internet Explorer that you're not going to be able to get on something like the, uh, the Chrome browser for Android or the Safari browser for the iPad. Well, you know, it might work, but it's it's not the same. As you see here, the, uh, the browser itself is very fluid. Um, wish I can get the brightness fixed a bit, but everything is very, very fast. Um, there's hardly any lag. I believe the uh, processor on this is 1.3 GHz, so it's not even um, a 1.5 or 1.7 like some of the newer tablets. But um, as you can see, it does run very smoothly here and everything just works very well in terms of typing as well the keyboard is right there, it's very nice everything is very fast let's go to tecker.com and see why, what is that noise? okay uh, so you see we get to we get to uh, the tecker.com, my website there and it's very smooth to go through, everything is just there uh, orientation switching is also very nice and it's very smooth as well albeit not as quick as it is on the iPad but as you can see it does have its advantages it looks very nice okay um, however there is something weird about this this is Internet Explorer and this is the main browser you're going to want to be using but if you go back to Metro UI you have another Internet Explorer um, that you can actually use which I find kind of weird because I'm not sure why you would want to do this but um I guess I, the, the way I've used this is if I need to do something very quickly on a web browser, like search something very quickly, I tend to use this version of the Internet Explorer. And if I'm in class or at home and I'm just, you know, on my other tablet doing nothing, I use the uh, this version of Internet Explorer. Um, you do get full version of Microsoft Office, so as you see we have Word, OneNote, Excel, and PowerPoint. 
I believe in Windows RT 8.1 you are going to get access to Outlook. So you will be able to check your emails using that instead of using the uh, kind of um, weird email app that's here, uh, YouTube email. Um, you do get access to um, Exchange, IMAP, POP3, all that other stuff. I have three setups right now. One for my Outlook, which is the uh, Microsoft's email that I set up for the tablet, my Gmail account, and the one for my law school. Uh, if that's in, uh, sorry, in terms of downloading apps, you're going to have to use the uh, online store here. It's, I mean, if you're used to tablets, it's not that much of a difference. I mean, you, you use the, the Play Store on Android or the App Store on, on um, iOS. Then you have a very similar experience. You should know how to browse through this. It's pretty simple, but it's a little odd as well. If you want to search, you're going to have to swipe from the right to get to the menus and um, search that way, which is kind of weird. I, don't, I think it should be a lot easier to be able to search through. Most of the time when you're on an application and you want to access menus within the application, you're going to swipe from the bottom up, and that brings up another menu there. And... Uh, swiping from the left brings you to your multitasker. So this is actually the best thing I found about this tablet. So for example, let's say I'm here in the App Store, I'm looking for something to get, but at the same time I want to message some of my friends. So I can drag the message out and on the sidebar I have my messages there. It's very simple, I have my message for people connected through Facebook or through Windows Live, either way you want to do. And you can very easily switch over which one you want on the big side, which one you want on the smaller side. Uh, kind of weird I found was I found myself doing was I have something open on this side on Internet Explorer and then I opened up the desktop there. Um, let's say for example I want to open up, I'm opening up a document on Microsoft Word and Word's going to open up here, I'll open up my document. I can have Word open and whatever I'm viewing on the website. I uh, also found very neat to use Evernote along with this because I've was using i been using Evernote a lot in terms of uh, taking notes in class and have the web browser there I can you know go to thetecker.com uh, say I'm doing research I hope I spelled that right yeah and I can open up a note there and then I have my notes here in the web browser there or the keyboard that's there and the web browser's there or alternatively just do it the same other way you see websites there notes are there so I really like this about um, this aspect of the tablet the multitasking is really nice it's, I had no experience of using something like this with uh, Android or with iOS though that was pretty sweet and I really like that um, in terms of the stock ASUS apps though it, it does get weird because you have two different camera apps one is ASUS camera one is a regular camera you get a little bit more functionality out of the ASUS camera and I found myself using that a lot more but some of the settings don't exactly work too well such as the flash it doesn't always um, activate right now I have flash on and it's gonna activate there but if your flash is set to auto most likely it's not going to activate I actually tried taking pictures of night uh, at night I'm sorry with the flash on auto and it just wouldn't work so that's just something to keep in mind there are some caveats to Windows RT but um, not anything that's too bad that you're not going to want to use. Um, the selection of apps is not as large as you would see on the Play Store or iOS App Store. Um, that's expected because developers don't usually tend to uh, develop applications for Surface RT a lot. Um, that could change in the near future, you never know. I mean Surface RT, um, not Windows 8 in general, is getting a lot more popular now. Uh, people, a lot of people, all manufacturers are making computers and using Windows RT because it's a newer version of Windows and it's, it's slowly getting there. You know, the apps that I use are there. I have my Evernote, I have my Amazon, I have Hulu Plus and Netflix. That's pretty much what I want and if there's anything else I need, like uh, let's say Crunchyroll for example, I can just open up the uh, Internet Explorer and just open up Crunchyroll that way. Because um, you do get a full version of uh, Internet Explorer. Just remember that. No, there's no mobile browser. This isn't uh, Chrome for Android or Safari for iOS. This is a full desktop web browser that you're using. There's no um, limitations on it, full flash. Everything works perfectly on that. So um, this is what I've been using for class. Combined with the keyboard dock, this is actually probably the best thing I've used. In the beginning, I was using the Asus Transformer tablet just because it had the better battery life. Um, and then I switched over to the iPad for the app support. But I think this is actually a better deal because the dock itself does have a very large battery in it. I'm in school usually from 9 in the morning to about 
5 to 6 at night and excuse me my battery I mean, the, the tablet itself lasts all day um, by the time I get home um, I live pretty far from my law school so by the time I get home around uh, 8 o'clock I usually have about 20% battery left and that's already uh, using up all of the battery on the dock so the tablet itself just has 20% uh, battery left so it does last you all day you do get a lot of use out of it it's very simple and very nice to use it's very fast um, and I, I, I really love this tablet it's probably the best tablet I've used so far although next year I'll probably have something better um, it does not use the normal ASUS uh, charger that you're going to find on the Prime or the Infinity or the TF300 it has a brand new type of charger um, so that's also something to keep in mind but um, that's it guys so uh, thanks for watching this has been the turnover for the and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video